Ladies and gents, my name is Brandon Stover. I'm the founder of Plato University, and this is how to create course outlines for your online courses. If you've seen my video on how to create a course in five easy steps, one of the steps in there was creating a course outline. And today we're gonna dive a little further into how you can go about doing that. So to start creating your outline, step one is to write down learning outcomes. A course outline is more than just a document of what your students are going to learn. It's a roadmap of where they are now to where they want to be, to their current state of having a problem, to their desired state of finding a solution. Your course is the vehicle for that transformation. So by this definition, learning outcomes are not just what your student's gonna know at the end of the course, rather learning outcomes are what your student will be able to do at the end of the course. For example, if your student is learning a language, the learning outcome is not that they're gonna know 500 vocabulary words by the end of the course. The real learning outcome is that they're going to be able to use those 500 vocabulary words to have a little bit of small talk with a stranger in that language. Do you see the difference? Most education falls short of explaining how knowledge will be used in the real world. And as a result, many courses have missing information that allow the student to actually have the transformation that they want, which is accomplishing something that they want to do in the real world. They have some sort of goal or problem they want to solve. Your course and the information is allowing them to do that. When you are making a course, you're making a promise to that student that if they spend the time and energy learning the material in this course and applying themselves, that they'll be able to use this information to solve a problem or accomplish a goal that they have set. So by creating learning outcomes, you're being very clear about what your promise is to that student. These learning outcomes create a North Star for you as you create your outline and ultimately as you create your course for exactly where your students are going to end up. So to begin writing learning outcomes, start by reviewing the needs that you uncovered in the discovery process when you talked with your students. I covered how to discover learners' needs in my last video, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. But ultimately, you're asking them what they want to learn and what they want to do with this knowledge. But remember, we were asking them, what is it that you want to know? What is it that you want to learn? And most importantly, what is it that you want to do with this knowledge? When you have answers to those questions by having gone and talked to your students, doing learner surveys and one-on-one -on -one interviews, you can now write three to five learning outcomes that are associated with those needs. Remember, we care about how students are gonna use this information, implying that they're going to take some sort of action with it. So when you're writing your learning outcomes, write them starting with a verb. So for example, in Plato University's How to Find Your Purpose course, we wrote three learning outcomes. By the end of the course, students are able to discover interests, strengths, values, dreams, and turn these into passions. Learning outcome number two is being able to put that passion into service for other people, help to solve global challenges, and discover meaningful work. And learning outcome number three is creating productive systems for them to be able to repeatedly put purpose into practice with intense motivation. You can see with each one of these learning outcomes, it's based around an action they'll be taking. So they're discovering stuff about themselves. They're taking what they discovered and putting it into service for other people. And then the third verb in our learning outcome is creating, creating productive systems to be able to do this on an ongoing basis. Now that you have your learning outcomes and your North Star for where you're taking your students, it's time to move to step two which is doing a brain dump of all the information that you think will help students to be able to reach that destination. Now, the reason that we're just going to kind of vomit everything out onto a page is because it's easier to organize information when you get it out of your head and can visually see it, manipulate it, and move it around. And just like if you were undergoing the writing process, it's easier to just get all your ideas out on a page in one step and then think about organizing it in the second step. So to be able to go through this first run through of your outline where you're just brain dumping everything, I recommend using some sort of visual tool to start writing out your ideas about the units of knowledge your students are going to need to know in order to achieve the learning outcomes. Two tools that work really well for this is Google Docs. You can just write everything out, write down bullet points, whatever way that's gonna help you to get that information out. Or a tool I like to use is Airtable, which is sort of like an Excel doc except it has more robust features and allows you to link a bunch of information that you're associating with that unit of knowledge or that idea that you're writing out. And the reason that this is useful is because as you go through this process, you're probably gonna start retrieving other information associated with that idea. 
maybe resources or talking points that you're going to use when you start recording your lessons. If you're doing it in a Google Doc, you can just write out bullet points attaching those resources or talking points to that. But if you're doing this in Airtable, you can create new columns and write out those resources in one column and write out those talking points in another column. At this point, you don't have to worry about being super complete or thoughts being well thought out. You're just trying to get the information out of your head. And as you go through this process, you might get stuck at a few points. And if you're struggling to figure out everything that your student needs, there's a few things you can do. First and foremost, return to the learning outcomes. Ask yourself, what would my students need to know in order to accomplish this learning outcome? Return to your students' motivations that you uncovered during those learning surveys and one-on-one -on -one interviews. What were your students motivated to learn? What gets them excited? And finally, you can look at other courses that have been created on the subject that you're creating a course for. We don't want to copy their course, but they probably have some steps in there that maybe you've forgotten, and you want to make sure that you include these in your course. Moving on to step three, we're going to reorganize all of this information that we've dumped out onto the page into a logical sequence of steps. Recall that a course outline is a roadmap from where your students are right now with the problems that they have to where they want to be, to having solutions or reaching their goals. Your course is the vehicle for that transformation, removing them from point A to point B. So in this step, when creating your course outline, you're thinking about the most logical sequence of steps that'll take them from point A over here to point B. Now, why would this be important to do? Remember, we're trying to help our students actually apply this information. If you just dump out all this information in front of them in no logical sequence, it's going to be very overwhelming. They're going to be asking themselves, what do I need to know first? What do I need to know next? How do I actually apply this stuff? Just like when you were learning to ride a bike, you have to hold their hand along the way as they get started. And over time, they'll start to build the competence around this information to know which piece of information they need to know next. But when they're just first starting out, they have no idea what's most important. What needs to come first? What are the foundational concepts? This becomes extremely important if you're using a mastery-based learning system, where they need to show mastery of step one before they move on to step two. Now, there's two ways that you can go about approaching putting your information into a logical sequence. You can forward engineer or you can reverse engineer. So forward engineering means you're starting at point A, where they are now, and continually asking yourself, what does my student need to know next? If they're here at point A, how do I get them to step one? How do I get them to step two? Which pieces of information are going to move them along those steps? In reverse engineering, you're starting at point B at the end, their learning outcome, where they're able to apply the information and reach a solution or achieve their goal. In reverse engineering, you continually ask yourself, what does my student need to know in order to achieve this? So at the end of the course, they have the learning outcome. What does your student need to know? The step right before this in order to achieve that. You're going to come up with something. Then you ask yourself again, what does my student need to know in order to achieve that? And you keep going backwards down the line until you're to point A where they are right now. Now, practically, this looks like in your uh, Word document or your Google Doc, of just copying and pasting and moving information around as you're answering those questions for yourself. If you're using Airtable, you can make a new column and just number system it, one, two, three, four, five and use the sorting tool to basically move information around that way. It's what makes Airtable a really great tool to use during this process. So now you have your learning outcomes, you have your information out, and you've started putting it into a logical sequence of steps. Our next step is to start creating activities associated with those steps. So activities are actions students should be able to take after having learned the material in a specific step or in a unit of knowledge. And these activities are small actions that add up to the larger action or learning outcome that students should be able to take at the end of the course. For example, in our How to Start a Podcast course, a learning outcome is actually launching a podcast. A step necessary in order to launch a podcast is learning how to record audio. An activity that would be associated with that step is downloading some recording software and doing a test recording to familiarize yourself with the audio software. Do you see how this is different than the way other courses are made? Some courses may just present the audio software to you or say, here's all the different types. And as a student, you would be asking, okay, that's great, but which ones do I use? And how do I use it? Which one's best for me? Which one's going to help me solve my problem to achieve my goal? But why else are we going to create activities? Activities are a demonstration that students actually know the information that they're learning. Activities also help them use that information. 
And by doing so, they get early wins that start to compound on themselves. And these early wins help them to have continued internal motivation as they go through the course and want to actually complete it. But most importantly, the reason we're doing activities in the process that we're talking about now in creating a course outline is because these activities are going to illuminate gaps of where you're missing information to help students move from point A to point B. And we'll talk about this more in just a moment. But first, let's discuss how you can create activities. When you're deciding on what activities to include, here's some questions to ask yourself. How could my student demonstrate mastery? What sort of activity would show that the student actually knows the information that they just learned? What would help my student to practice this skill? How could they actually apply it and continue to apply it so they could get better? What would help them make progress towards the learning outcome? Remember, we're stacking these activities on top of each other so that by the end, all these small actions equal to a larger action, which is the learning outcome. And finally, but certainly not least, is what would be fun for them to do? Learning should be fun, and if you want them to continue to go through this process, there should be at least be some activities that are going to be fun for the student to do. Not all of them will be fun. Some are necessary and for them to learn the information. But as much as possible, helping them to apply the knowledge in a fun way is going to help build that internal motivation to keep going. Now, when I create lessons, I try and keep information short down to 10 to 20 minutes of consumption and then associate an activity with that that can be done in less than an hour. All right, step five, our final step in creating a course outline is to fill in the gaps. As I mentioned earlier, as you're creating a course outline and creating activities for those units of knowledge in your outline, you're going to notice that there's some steps missing to help your students get from point A to point B. Oftentimes, this signals that there's some units of knowledge that you forgot to include. Now, I know it's impossible to include everything that your student needs to know about a certain topic. However, the more complete that you can be, the more likely it is for your student to be able to actually achieve the learning outcome of the course. To fill in these gaps, it's pretty easy. Ask yourself, what steps am I missing? To answer that, it may be actually helpful for you to go through the process that you're outlining in your course. Go through these steps, and as you go through the process, take notes. When you actually launch your course and begin delivering it, it's very likely that you're going to have spots come up where it's very challenging for students to get through the course or they begin asking a lot of questions. This is a great signal that you're missing a step or some units of knowledge that are going to help the student take the journey from point A to point B. Now, being an expert, you're sometimes blind to what students need to know. You have what they call the curse of knowledge. By working with somebody who's not an expert in the material that you're covering, you gain an outside perspective that can stand in for all the novices that you're teaching. And I would love to be that person for you. So let's schedule a free call together and let's see if I can help you turn your wisdom into actionable education. Let's build something great together. If you'd like to see all five steps, check the link in the description.